In today's video, we'll discuss Grafana Cloud data sources and plugins. Beginning from your Grafana Cloud portal, log into your Grafana Cloud instance by selecting the login button here. This will bring you to your Grafana Cloud instance homepage. And from here, we'll select the gear or cog icon on the left hand side and select data sources. Here you'll see your default pre-configured data sources that are part of your Grafana Cloud stack, such as Loki, Prometheus, and Tempo. Coming back over to your Grafana Cloud portal, you'll see these environments listed here. So coming back to our instance, if there's a data source that we'd like to add that is not already included here, we'll click on Add Data Source. We can either search in this search field here or scroll down and search by type, such as time series databases, distributed tracing, SQL. So these are all of the native um, supported data sources included in Grafana Cloud. You can see these also listed on our docs page here. So let's add a new data source to our account. Let's select Zipkin. You'll see a brief message display in the top right hand corner showing that the data source was added. And here we will enter our uh, Zipkin environment information so that we can save and test the data source. Once this is done, we'll be able to configure um, dashboards and panels from this data source. Coming back to our data sources page, now we will see that the Zipkin data source is here. But what if you want to add a data source that isn't already included? For that, you can add a plugin. At the bottom of this page, you will see a link to our plugins repo. Scrolling back up, coming over to our gear again, we can go to plugins and view the default plugins that are available as part of Grafana Cloud. And let's select, uh, let's try to install Amazon Timestream. You'll see that it is not showing up available here compared to Amazon CloudWatch. Shows up here in the search result. So for example, if we'd like to add Amazon Timestream, We'll go to the plugins repo here and we can search in the field here. Before we do that, notice that there are several different types of plugins. There are data source plugins, app plugins, and panel plugins. There are also enterprise plugins which require an enterprise license. And you will see that listed here at the top of the page, as well as on the installation page. It'll ask you to contact us. Note that there are also plugins that are created and maintained by Grafana, as well as plugins that are created and maintained by the community. So going back to Amazon Timestream, search, select the result, review these configuration details, and when I'm ready, I can either click on this install button here, or I can click installation here, and if you're part of more than one organization, you'll be able to select which org you'd like to install the plugin on. For today's demo, I'll select this org, and I'll click the install plugin button. We'll see that Amazon Timestream version 1.3.3 was installed today. This is also where we can remove the plugin if we wish to uninstall the plugin. Coming back to our Grafana Cloud account on our plugins or our data sources page, you'll notice that the Amazon Timestream is not displaying yet. If you install something from the plugins repo and it doesn't show up right away, give your instance a minute or so. But now we see that this plugin has been installed. 
We can select it to review configuration details and it shows you how to add the data source. From our side menu, we'll click on configuration uh, data sources. We'll click the add data source button and then we'll select time stream. So going here, clicking on data sources, add data source button. We can see the Amazon time stream here. We have a lot of plugins, data sources to select. We can also search. So we will select this. We'll see that brief message that displays confirming the data source was added. And here's where we'll enter our AWS credentials for this data source. Once this is ready, um, we'll be able to build dashboards based off this. If we come over to data sources again, now we will see that this displays here. If we want to remove this plugin, um, first remove the data source by selecting delete. We'll see that the data source has been deleted and we still have the plugin installed. So we can either remove that from the plugins page by clicking this button. You can also come to your Grafana Cloud portal and in the details for your Grafana Cloud instance, we will see the plugins that we've installed listed. Let me just refresh my page. There we go. So we can remove this here or we can remove it how we originally installed it from this page. For today, I will click remove from this page. We'll confirm delete. And remember, it'll take a moment for this um, to refresh as the Grafana Cloud instance restarts. So we can refresh our page. Okay, and now it no longer displays. So it can take a minute or two and you'll probably uh, double guess yourself. But now that when we search, it does not show up. And the data source that we added for that plugin, we also deleted. If you remove the plugin before deleting the data source, when you come back to your data sources and select that, you'll see an error because the plugin is detected as missing. Um, so you can either reach out to support or you can install the plugin again, remove the data source first, and then remove the plugin. Um, that has been a basic overview of data sources and plugins and different ways to install uh, native and add-on plugins.